Hello YouTube, what is up? This is KOA Mist back with another video. So today we are going to be doing a video about lore talents and pretty much which lore talents and things you should prioritize over other ones that are um, less helpful and pretty much less impactful in your game. So without further ado, let us get started. Lore talents. So, as you know, I'm pretty sure, hopefully, there are three types of lower talents. War, economy, and balance. It really depends on what type um, of player you are. If you're like a hardcore war player like I am, I put all my talent points on a war. If you're a hardcore farmer, you probably um, put a lot of your talent points into economy. And then if you're um, trying to hardcore rebuild or like build back your troops training or just for defenses per defense purposes you would want to put in balance or you can have a happy mixture of all three which is what most people do but anyway let's get back to the war topic and pretty much we'll go over every single every single um skill and talk about whether it's good or bad and what skills you should do rather than this etc etc and that's pretty much gonna be our video let us get started so starting out we have infantry attack obviously that's what you have to start out no matter what in order to move on. So once you get down infantry attack, you should definitely do infantry defense and infantry health because as a tank, that is very, very important. So obviously you want to do those two. March speed, you're going to have to do it to move on. Emergency recall. This skill is actually very useful in case you have to um, recall your troops back in case like someone is attacking you or, for example, you're really, really tired and you need to send your troops out. You can just do emergency recall to send them out. Moving on, so there are three categories you can take next. The Siege Attack, Cavalry Attack, or Bowman Attack. The way I did, because I am a spender, I spend a lot, so I don't really need to prioritize compared to like free-to-play players, but I did, I completely maxed out my Cavalry Attack, Defense, and Health, and Bowman Attack, Defense, and Health, as you can see yep, right here. But the thing is, what you should actually do if you're prioritizing is actually probably... You should do siege attack because siege you need high attack siege attack to get rid of traps. You would do cavalry attack because you need to um, remember prioritize cavalry high damage dealing and bowmen for the same reason. But then in order because you have to get one one of them completely done to move on. So the one I would recommend doing is just be doing cavalry because that's your second line of defense. If you don't remember. Um, this video, go check back my Troop Formations 101 video. It talks about that. But anyways, yes. So because that is your um, second line of defense, it's important to have defense and health. Speaking of defense and health, um, if you had to choose between defense or health, you should always go with health. It, because health is what determines whether your troop stays alive or not. And defense is just an add-on of that. But pretty much, yes, if, you, if you're down to the choice between buffing up defense more or health, It'd be you want to you would want to choose health. Obviously, the ideally would be buff up everything, but if you are free to play, you have prioritized. Therefore, it is health. So moving on, march capacity. This is very important because this pretty much determines how many troops you can send in a single march, which is very important in the future when you're attacking higher level players. And then for this, you would probably want to do cavalry attack and then stop on the defense and health, and then move on in the infantry section. Finish the infantry attack. Infantry defense and infantry health, and then you would move on to colossal march. Because yes, cavalry defense, cavalry health is important, but as I was saying, you don't want really want to use your um 20, 20 talent points on cavalry defense and cavalry health when it could when it, um you can put it on something else that'd be more impactful. I put it on there because as I was saying, I'm I'm not a free to play player, so I don't really have to prioritize. I just have to work on everything. So Colossal March, this is very helpful because, for example, if you're doing Portal, if you're doing the Portal Challenge, if you're attacking someone big, you can use this to temporarily increase your March capacity, which will let you um, hit bigger players and have less casualties. March Speed is required to do, and then once you get down to here, obviously, you, if you had to choose between any troop or siege, you would want to go with the other troop. You, you don't want to choose siege. Honestly, Siege doesn't do much, but if you, but in this case, the reason I don't have any of my siege things done is because 
I focus so much on Bowman defense, Bowman health, and all, and like cavalry defense, cavalry health, inventory health, and infantry defense. And because that stat is so high already, I don't even really have to worry about traps because I. Um, they'll probably be able to withstand it. But for most of those free-to-play players, I would recommend increasing... On, only do Siege Attack. Leave Siege Defense and Siege Health. Because Siege Attack is important for your range Siege and your melee Siege to do damage to the traps so your other troops won't get injured by the traps. But in this case, you would do Siege Attack and then you would finish the Bowman category to move on. And then you get to the March Capacity, obviously do that. And then when you, once you get to the infantry attack, you had to choose between infantry. Okay, let me flip this up. Infantry attack, you want to choose infantry health over infantry defense. Because um, infantry health would give you... Uh, mo As I was saying, if you choose between health or defense, you want to choose infantry health over anything. So infantry health, but obviously, ideally, you want to get both of them done. And then move on to the wooden conversion. And then when you get a cavalry attack, if you choose between cavalry defense, cavalry health, you should go with cavalry health. Moving on to march speed. When march speed is done, you go to bowman attack. And then bowman defense or bowman health, you would go with bowman health. March capacity, life preserver, and then siege attack. Yeah, you have siege attack on. And then for this, you actually have to use choose a siege because, well, you have to choose one to move on. So obviously, you're going to want to choose siege health. And then these last three are OP because they're army buffs. So that means... Uh, this would buff up 10% of every single troop attack. So it'd be like 10% on infantry, 10% on cavalry, 10% on um, archers, 10% on um, siege attack. And then this would be defense and health to all your whole armies. The, these three are the most OP, but obviously it's going to take forever to get there as I am um, world level 40 and I'm still back here. Let us now move on to economy. So economy, starting out with construction, you have to get construction done. And then between food production or wood production, you would want to go with wood production. Because for food production... Oh, wait, shit. <clears throat> I fucked up. JK. So you would want to go with food production because wood production, there's always a surplus of woods which you can always gather at a fast pace. And wood stacks up on like food because you can't stack up food because of upkeep. So you would actually want to choose food production over wood production. Going on, you get research done, and then instant yield. Instant yield is very a very, very great skill. You can pretty much instantly harvest five hours of resources production from all your resource bu buildings. And there's a 12 hour cooldown. Yes, that is really, really OP AF. So you wanna do, you, you would only wanna do this, you wanna make sure you click this skill um, after you um, like speed your, uh, Farm and mills up, not before because if, because if you do it before you speed it up, then you're kind of wasting like you're probably getting 200k less resources of each. Food gathering and wood gathering, I would actually go with wood gathering because, as I was saying earlier, you gather wood because wood can stack up, but you wouldn't gather food because food can't stack up because of upkeep. So, I would go with wood gathering, iron production, iron gathering, construction too. So, you get all that done before you can move on. Food production or food gathering, as I was saying, you don't really want to gather food, so you want to go to production, food production, you get food production done, and then you get development. Ideally, you want to get all of these done, but like I feel like I'm being a bit repetitive, but <laughs> just further emphasizing, this is mostly for free-to-play players or players who don't have a lot of cash to spend on a game, so therefore you have to prioritize, so this is what you would want to prioritize on. So you get development done, which is a pretty good skill as well. So now you get to choose between wood production or wood gathering. For this, you, if you choose wood production, you can also choose iron production. But the thing is, wood and iron you can stack up. For resources that can stack up, you would want to choose gathering. Because you can gather at a much faster rate than you can produce it. So I would go to wood gathering, wood gathering, and iron gathering. And then to move on to research, and then you do silver production, silver gathering. And then moving on to food production and food gathering or wood production or wood gathering. So this is pretty much, are you going to choose food over wood or wood over food? Honestly, I would choose food over wood. Yes, this is a bit contradictory to what I said earlier about the gathering thing. But this is mostly, you don't want to waste um, talent points like doing food production and then food gathering and then moving on. But then doing like wood gathering, wood, um, wood gathering, wood production and do both. 
Because that'd just be... I mean, ideally, yes, that'd be the best. But if you're prioritizing, you want to choose wood. I mean, you want to choose food over wood. Because food, you'd use... Food is, you can't stack it up, therefore it is much harder to get and come by. So you'd actually want to do food, because it is more valuable than wood. Instant gather causes all troops currently gathering resources to have their load capacity filled immediately. Applies to food, wood, iron, and silver gathering. Excludes alliance resource buildings, 24 hour cooldown. That means pretty much, if you send something out to like a level 7 mine, if you click this ability, it instantly fills up to 80,000 if it's a level 7. For iron, and then we'll come back and bring it back for you. That is really OP, so obviously get that done. <clears throat> so get construction done, because that's required before you move on. Iron production or iron gathering, because iron can stack up, you would choose iron gathering. Because because you can gather at a faster rate that you can produce. Then, or, then you get research done, and then same thing, production over gathering, because silver can stack up, you would choose gathering. Ideally, you want to get all this done. Like I'm repeating again, but I'm just repeating for people who probably like to skip, like to skip videos. Therefore, I'm repeating this. If you like to, um, you have to prioritize if you don't spend a lot. And therefore, if you choose between production and gathering, you choose gathering for things that can stack up. For food, you want to choose production. All right, moving on to balance. There is the monster hunter. You have to get that done before you can move on. Troop load, get that done. Monster stamina pretty much just reduces the stamina usage when you're fighting monsters. It's not even by that much. It's by 20%. So, for example, if you're attacking, like, um, Dragon, uses about 20 stamina. It's, let me see if I can do my math right. You'd cost 16 stamina. Yep, that is some, like, college AP math right there. All right, moving on. Training capacity, training speed, or hospital capacity, and healing speed. So this is, <clears throat> um... This really depends what type of player you are. So whether you're gonna go into the where you're gonna if you're gonna speed train or go to the defense. If you're more of a defensive type player, obviously go to hospital capacity and healing speed. But if you're more trying to rebuild after like um KVK and you just lost a lot of troops, you would want to go with um training capacity and training speed. And then storage production, protection, stamina recovery. And then trap attack, you to get that done. And then trap defense or trap health. Ideally, you want to get both. But if you had to choose one, it'd be trap health. Moving on, then trap builder increases the speed of trap construction. Kind of useless, but hey, you have to get that done no matter what. There's population surge, monster hunter, troop load. And then now you get down to this. <clears throat> so you, this is pretty much choosing capacity or speed. Honestly, you want to go choose capacity because with speed, I mean... Yes, but there's that's what speed ups are for. That's why you should choose capacity because there's nothing to do, um, nothing to like buff up the capacity of how much you can hold or train at the same time. Or for healing speed and training speed, you can uh, make up for it using speed ups. But honest, but obviously, if you're like speed training, then you should um get your training speed up. So you have to get your wall defense up. Then you need to choose between trap health, trap attack, or trap defense. Like again, ideally you want to do all three, but if you had to choose one to move on. You would choose trap. Actually, hmm. Actually, in this case, you want to choose trap attack and trap health because trap attack is what de uh, determines the amount of damage you do to the opponent troops, and then trap health is whether that trap survives or not to do more damage. Therefore, I would use trap health and trap attack. Holy shit, my throat hurts. Let me get some water. Okay, <clears throat> moving on. So storage protection. You have to do that obviously to protect your storehouse and hold more resources. Instant heal, free instant heal of 10% of your wounded troops. Pretty OP, but it's like way down the road, so. Trap builder increases the speed of trap construction. Kind of useless because it doesn't even take that long to make traps. Stamina recovery increases the stamina recovery speed. And finally, a wall defense increases the level of your wall defense. So you pretty much have to get all three of these, all of these done at the end no matter what to like move on to get anything else. So, that is pretty much it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm a new YouTuber, so please let me know if there's anything that can make my videos be better. If you have any video ideas, please let me know in the comment section below. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment, and share this video for more, comment, for, uh, for more content. And as always, stay sexy.